on HQ Spotlight, you're getting a look at the CFP rankings as we head into week 13 of college football. We have a huge matchup, as I'm sure you've heard plenty of times with a lot of CFP implications that is sparking a bit of a debate. We have Ohio State currently sitting at number two, nine and one, taking on an undefeated Indiana team sitting at number five. So does Indiana need to win to be a surefire lock in the CFP? Um, Ohio State, what if they lose? We're going to get into it with our guys. So let's welcome in our guys from 24-7 Sports, Jeff Rabjohns and Dave Biddle, for this matchup that we all predicted was going to be a top five matchup in the offseason, right, gentlemen? Um, but before we get into it, let's talk about Indiana doubling down on their trust in Kirk Signetti with an eight-year, $64 million contract in the midst of this historic 10-0 start. Jeff, can you just kind of walk us through the significance of this deal as we're seeing it right now? Yeah, the most important thing from the standpoint of Indiana football for Kurt Signetti getting that eight year, $72 million deal is it shows that Indiana is now properly and, and more fully investing in football overall. For years, there have been questions about is Indiana fully committed to football as some other schools are, as they can. They might not have all the resources of everybody else, but are they using the maximum amount of resources that they have available to them for football? The answer now with Kirk Signetti's contract is yes. And even though Kurt Signetti's part is what's been you know announced publicly there's more to come the assistant salary pool i'm told is going to increase they're talking about doing some things facility wise so it, it's an overall comprehensive commitment to football that is far more than indiana has ever done in the past eight year 72 million dollars um certainly not joking around so ryan day when asked about this matchup almost referred to it as a must win situation and the buckeyes already dealing with some hurdles ahead of this losing a really key member of their team uh center seth mclaughlin um he is out because of an achilles injury dave how big of a blow is this for the buckeyes ahead of this highly contested game against indiana it's a very big loss for Ohio State. Seth McLaughlin was playing as arguably the best center in the country. He was going to be up for the Remington Award. Um, some are calling him the most improved player in college football. And, you know, as we all know, the center is the quarterback of the offensive line. I mean, Seth McLaughlin um, made, made all the calls. You know, he was a leader, even though he transferred in from Alabama. And the one issue he had at Alabama last year that we heard was some snapping issues. He wasn't showing that at all. Shotgun snapping issues. He was just playing very well. So it's a huge loss for Ohio State, especially going into a top five matchup. And then if they're able to get past Indiana, they have to deal with Michigan's D tackles the following week and then the postseason. So it's a massive loss for them. And keep in mind, they've also had to deal with the loss of their left tackle, Josh Simmons, for the season. So they're down 40% of their starting offensive line which was the biggest question mark entering the season even before the injuries. Yeah, so it's certainly going to be a challenge for the quarterbacks. So let's get into it. Will Howard, uh, regardless of some injuries in a number of categories, whether, whether we're looking at completion percentage, passer efficiency and FBS, he is right there in the mix. Top two, top three. Are we maybe not talking about him enough, Dave? Are we overlooking Will Howard? A little bit. I know people are going to say, well, is he a little bit of a product of the system? Like Kyle McCord put up good stats last year, although I think Will Howard's putting up better stats. Look at the receivers he's throwing to. He's in a Chip Kelly, Ryan Day offense. I get all that. But like you mentioned, he's number two in the country in completion percentage. He's number three in the country in passing efficiency. He's also added a running element. He doesn't have a lot of rushing yards, but I don't think they've shown that yet. They're going to have to show it against Indiana and going forward. Uh, but he had six rushing touchdowns. Again, third in the country in passing efficiency. Will Howard has been exactly what Ohio State hoped he'd be. The one area of his game that wasn't maybe where they wanted it to be was the deep ball, but he's shown lately that he can throw the deep ball well too. So Will Howard, yes, I feel like he's having a bit of an underrated season for the Buckeyes. All right, and what do you know? We were just looking at that graphic of passer efficiency in FBS, and the guy right in front of him is Curtis <laughs> Rourke uh, right there, second in FBS, Jeff. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Curtis is having a fantastic season. I think the things that stand out, um, his efficiency, his ability to process information very, very quickly. When you go back and watch games um, and just kind of slow down some some throws, some plays, and look and see, okay, when did the guy he threw to become open? He's throwing guys open. He's really making some what, what some people call, you know, Sunday throws. Um, he can throw the ball long. He's obviously got a terrific connection with a number of guys. Uh, he's known Elijah Surratt. Uh, for probably, you know, several years now. But his ability to create plays when they need them are really important. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things you can point to and say, okay, this is Curtis Ward. But when they were out at UCLA and their first 
nine third downs where they passed. He converted all nine. I think that's the best single example of like how important is Curtis Rourke and how good is Curtis, Curtis Rourke facing nine third downs, converting nine third downs in a row. That's pretty telling. Um, I know we just talked about both of the quarterbacks, so let's get into the keys to a win. We'll start with Indiana because, of course, it's been this really controversial conversation. Do they need to just be competitive to be considered and be in the CFP conversation still post this game? Do they need to win? Um, Jeff, what are the keys to Indiana's win if they want to try and keep their perfect season alive and keep that conversation going in terms of the CFP? Well, yeah, I think they should be in regardless as long as they turn around next week and beat Purdue. If you actually do what Ward Manual says the committee is going to do and look at how you are playing and how much you dominate opponents, you should dominate. But as far as this game goes, I think there's three things that kind of stand out. They got to get touchdowns in the red zone. Uh, Ohio State's been, I still think they're, I believe they're still ranked number one uh, as far as fewest touchdowns allowed when teams get in the red zone. You got to get some touchdowns. Can't be just about getting field goals. You got to get some pressure, and I think they can do it off the edges. We with the injuries to the Ohio State offensive line, maybe C.J. West up the middle is a factor as well. But I really think Mikhail Kamara on the edges is something you really got to look at. Third thing for Indiana is be who you are. You are a good team. You're playing good football. You know who you're supposed to be. Don't get lost in the lights and try to do five, six things that you haven't done or that you can't do well. And I really think under Signetti, that third point probably is, is going to be addressed fairly well during this week. Yeah, absolutely. Don't try to, to get crazy. I know there's so, much, so many storylines and headlines out there about the CFP and certainly it could be a distraction. Let's talk about the Buckeyes on the flip side, Dave, because they are sitting at two in those CFP rankings. Ryan Day already calling this essentially a must win for his team. So what are their keys to a victory? Yeah, the first thing is how is the new center for Ohio State going to look against this really exotic, talented Indiana front seven? Indiana does a, does a great job with their blitz packages. Now Ohio State's breaking in a new center. We don't even know who that center is going to be. It could be Carson Hensman moving from left guard. He started all 12 regular season games at center last year. Or it could be redshirt freshman Josh Padilla. We don't know who it's going to be, but they're going to have a new center. And if they if it's Hensman moving to center, they're going to have a new left guard. So either way, that, that that center has to hold up well against this Indiana defense. And then on defense, they have to pressure Curtis Rourke, who's a heck of a quarterback, and they have to get off the field on third down. They have not done a good job lately of getting off the field on third down. Overall, Ohio State's been very good defensively. They have to pressure Rourke, make him uncomfortable, and get off the field on third down. And can Will Howard throw the deep ball? He did it well last week against Northwestern. That's been the one thing maybe overall that he has been maybe a little substandard with. If he can hit the deep ball consistently, that's going to be huge for Ohio State. Dave, Jeff, we certainly appreciate it previewing this highly anticipated top five matchup on deck with Indiana and Ohio State. It's all going down Saturday at noon Eastern. Getting a look at the resume comparison, 10-0 versus 9-1. Looking at the strength of schedule to date, the strength of schedule remaining. The best win on the resume for Indiana is Michigan. And we heard Dennis and DK talking about that for Ohio State. A little bit better of a best win at number four, Penn State. CFP chances, not really bad for either of them up until this point. Indiana sitting at 81%. The Buckeyes almost a lock right now at 97% chance to make that CFP.